because when I was younger, like I looked up to you. So for me to be sitting in this chair next to you, just talking about this stuff, it's a little odd for me. <laughs> Delanta Jamero Steffens, aka DJ Steffens, born December 19th, 1990. Today's feature is the perfect example of what happens when the game is seen at one dimension for too long. DJ Steffens was no question blessed to say the least with the physical tools to be the highest jumper the game has ever seen. He was 6'5", long arms and of course could jump out the gym. In fact, at his year's NBA Draft Combine, Steffens recorded the highest running vertical, standing vertical, and fastest three-quarter court sprint time ever, making him on paper the most gifted basketball player when it came to running and jumping ever. We've seen stories like this time and again and there's even been questions about popular street ball players that suffered from the exact same thing, only perfecting one aspect of their game and it leads to a journeyman career all over the world dealing with the inconsistency that comes with and decisions having to be made that takes the player further away from the goal of sticking in the NBA for the ability to capitalize on the small window athletes have at their peak. Steffens wasn't a highly recruited athlete out of high school, went on to have an underwhelming college career, but his talents as a leaper still afforded him the opportunity to play at the highest level, even if it was short-lived and used more as a promotional tool, never expected to last long term. As a fan of basketball since a young age, DJ looked up to guys like Vince Carter, who's heralded as one of the game's greatest dunkers of all time, and said watching him made him fall in love with the game, seeing the reaction he'd receive from fans every time Vince geared up for another breathtaking dunk in traffic or on fast breaks. The thing about Vince Carter though, was he also developed into a great player in general, able to size his man up and use his great footwork and athleticism to take them off the dribble for in-lane finishes, and Carter was also a great long distance shooter over his career, having a handful of seasons where he shot 40% or better from deep, finishing his career as a 37% three point shooter, arguably why he was able to have a career that extended into playing in four different decades, the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and just inside the 2020s. He retired at 43, 22 years in the league, and is likely a first ballot Hall of Famer. He became the exact opposite of a DJ Steffens in what an athlete has the potential to develop into if they find a way to add to that athleticism which at some point disappears from every athlete known to man. He was the player only good at dunking and for these reasons it led to his growth being stunted. Salute to Anonymous Kyle for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it man. Take a minute to like, subscribe and comment on who I should do next. DJ Steffens is a 6'5 shooting guard born in Germany and attended high school in Harker Heights, Texas and was slow to develop into a Division I prospect. He wasn't recruited heavily until Memphis came along and offered him a scholarship which he accepted and went on to be the crowd favorite since day one. His numbers were consistently low across the board until his senior season where he made some improvement but even then, wasn't enough to convince an NBA team to take him in the 2013 draft, going undrafted after recording a vertical leap of 40 inches and the highest running vertical leap 46 inches ever recorded. A few opportunities here and there, but in the end, stunt number one, he was way out of position. As the title suggests, DJ Stefan suffered from a lot of deficiencies in his game that hindered him from having the career he planned on. First off and one of the most important was him being much out of position for his game style and size. From the beginning as a player this needs to be realized even though you can't project how tall you will be in the future. It's why guidance is so important. My advice would be to always make sure the most fundamental skills are worked on as much as possible so no matter what size you end up, you're ready for and even bring some things to the position no one expects, making you a unique prospect. Skills like ball handling and learning offensive moves that make you a threat 
at the guard and wing positions, shooting, having a workable shooting form, balance, footwork, and consistent practice, and finishing at the rim in all different ways, developing your touch with both hands, and also creating new finishing moves unique to your creativity. Imagine if Kevin Durant allowed his coaches as an amateur to stick him in the post like they did with a lot of taller kids growing up in his era. Bol Bol, Victor Wembanyama, all advanced in their development since a young age who would have struggled without the other skills they continue to develop, even at the size they could be big men without the body type that could grow into an all-time great big man, maybe not even make the NBA had they continued on at that position. At 6'5", at the very least, Steffens should have had a better offensive game, specifically his ability to knock down open three-pointers, being in the era the game changed to utilizing that predominantly. In his four years in college at 6'5", he attempted 46 three-pointers and made 17 of them. Before his senior year, he attempted just 10 in three years. This means to me that he's a liability from the start if I'm a GM. For Steffens to have success, everything would have to be created for him, and at his size and listed position, it's just not appealing to teams, especially in this era. Stunt number two, going undrafted. Everything said before, along with a few other things, made DJ Steffens go undrafted leaving Memphis and presented an uphill road to playing in the coveted NBA. For a league with less than 500 player jobs, even less when you think about the draft to players retiring ratio, it's almost impossible to get into that league lacking as much from your bag that can help a team on that level. One thing Steffens was good at was he ran fast breaks expectedly well and was great at backdoor situations and lobs and was a pretty decent rebounder and potential shot blocker with his leaping ability. None of that is going to allow you to stick in the league though. I commend Steffens for even making it to the NBA, considering he was just about as not a good fit as can be. But going undrafted in the beginning specifically for Steffens who lacked much outside of catching lobs and putbacks, set him up to have an inconsistent shot at an NBA opportunity. He joined the Miami Heat for the Orlando Summer League, then the Dallas Mavericks for the Vegas Summer League, but was unable to make either team. He immediately began his overseas journey August 2013 in Greece, but returned in March to the United States for a 10-day contract opportunity with the Milwaukee Bucks, appearing in three games and scoring seven total points. The Bucks did not offer a second 10-day and Steffens was on the move again overseas and the D-League and wouldn't see another NBA opportunity until 2016. Going undrafted means no team is obligated to you in any way, setting up the course for a basketball nomad. Stunt number three, time goes by. After everything mentioned happens, you begin to notice that decisions have to be made for your future because time never stops for anyone. Also, after a certain amount of time, teams move past the idea of you on their team along with the game continues to evolve past your gifts and in your personal life things happen as well that make moving on obvious. NBA teams are not just concerned with youth, they need youth to survive. Understanding elite athletes have the chance to either be injured or simply decline in that area, so at some point teams are going to stop calling. DJ did get a call from the Memphis Grizzlies in 2016, signing him to a partially guaranteed two-way deal. He appeared in just one game for them before being waived and having to make a family decision to head overseas and likely remain there after catching a domestic violence case a week after being released from the Grizzlies and to provide for his now two daughters. All in all, DJ Steffens had opportunity and that's all you can ask for but his game wasn't suited for longevity and he didn't last for these reasons. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunnick Growth, and I'm out.